Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I am happy to be with you again today after quite a bit of time. And thank you, Pastor Ben, for giving me the opportunity to reflect on God's Word with you today. During this month of October, we remember Martin Luther and the Reformation. You probably have heard the story of how Luther became a health frontliner when the deadly bubonic plague that had killed millions of people in Europe visited Luther's home in Wittenberg. The year was 1527, and scientific knowledge about germs and diseases were not yet developed at the time. The plague that hit Wittenberg was only an epidemic and did not affect all the cities, cities and towns in Germany. Thus, one way of escaping the disease was by leaving town and going to uninfected places. Because of the fear of infection and death, pastors in Wittenberg were torn between saving their own families or staying in the infected town and continuing to serve their churches. It was a dilemma for them. They asked Luther for his advice. Luther said that saving one's life was not wrong in itself. Luther explains that the Apostle Paul and King David escaped to save themselves when their lives were threatened. Pastors may leave, but they must ensure that there was someone to take care of the flock. Otherwise, they must stay. Meanwhile, the pastors who stay and continue the ministry must take necessary precautions to avoid the disease. During the time of the epidemic, Luther was 44 years old. His wife was pregnant, and his young son was sick. But Luther decided to stay. He converted his house into a makeshift hospital and provided pastoral care to the sick and dying. He became a health frontliner. Luther did not presume that his Christian faith would make him immune from the disease. He took health precautions. He fumigated the areas, purified the air, took medicines, and avoided places where his presence was not needed. For Luther, staying and serving the sick and dying was not just a duty. For him, regardless of whether a pastor went to another place or stayed to serve, the important thing was to do it out of love for neighbor. These days, COVID-19 has caused us much hardship and pain. Some of us have probably lost friends and loved ones due to COVID or COVID-triggered illnesses. Others have lost their jobs or their incomes diminished. Some others have to stay at home and cannot even come to church. Some people have likened COVID-19 to a thorn in the flesh, a thorn in the flesh of us Christians in church life, in business, and even in sports. St. Paul had a thorn in the flesh that hurt him so much and interfered in his missionary work. And so three times he fervently prayed to God to remove it, but God said no. God told Paul, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Grace is one of the key words of the Reformation. 
by grace alone, is one of the Reformation slogans. And we use the word grace in everyday language. We say grace before meals. We are impressed by a graceful dancer. We teach our children to observe the social graces when they are with people. But another way of understanding grace is to think of its opposite, ungrace, ungrace. Luther's experience in Wittenberg after the epidemic gives us an example of ungrace. After the plague subsided in Wittenberg, some townspeople criticized Luther and the pastors who stayed for being reckless. They accused Luther of risking the life of his pregnant wife, the unborn child, his son, and his own life. On the other hand, people also criticized the pastors who fled to other towns to escape the plague. They accused those pastors of deserting the flock. Here we see an example of ungrace. Instead of being grateful, the people unfairly criticized Luther and passed judgment on his action. We probably have seen ungrace in the behavior of other people, and perhaps we ourselves have done that in our own life. But let us dig deeper in what grace means. We are all familiar with the blessing that have the words, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So what is this grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that we speak of? Today we observe social distancing as part of the health protocol. During the time of Jesus, children were kept at a distance during adult conversations. In the social hierarchy, children were below women and only above the slaves. Men were the privileged ones at the top of the hierarchy. One day, Jesus was teaching the people and some parents brought their children to him. But the disciples rebuked them and stopped the children from coming, going near to Jesus. This was social distancing for the wrong reason. But Jesus told the disciples, let the children come. That is grace. Jesus welcoming everyone no matter of social status, economic status, or whatever, but especially the underprivileged. One time when Jesus was in Jerusalem, he saw a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years, lying by a pool together with other disabled persons, the blind, the lame, the sick. These people believed that at a certain time, an angel would come and stir the pool. And whoever gets to the pool first, when it was stirred, was going to be healed. Jesus saw the paralyzed man and asked him, Do you want to get well? And the man answered, Sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down there ahead of me. Jesus saw the man locked in in his difficult situation, in his helplessness. So Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once, the man was, killed, was cured. He got up and walked. This is grace. 
The Lord Jesus, seeing the man's helplessness, healing him, and giving him a new leash on life. In another incident, while Jesus was teaching a crowd, the Pharisees and the scribes rudely interrupted him. They had dragged a woman caught in adultery from a house and put her right there in the center of the crowd, perhaps with only a blanket to cover herself. According to Jewish law, the man who was with her was supposed to be arrested also. And yet, it's only the woman whom the Pharisees and scribes brought to Jesus. The Pharisees tell Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They did not really care about the woman. The shame and indignity that they had inflicted on her. To them, she was just an object to be used to entrap Jesus, to say something that would incriminate him. If Jesus says she should be stoned, then he would be dis disobeying the Roman authorities who alone could meet out the death penalty. But if Jesus says that the woman should not be stoned, then they will accuse him of disobeying the law of Moses. Jesus stood down, rode on the ground. After a while, he stood up and told the people, let him who is without sin throw the first stone. Upon hearing this, his accusers left one by one. Then Jesus told the woman, Where are your accusers? Did anyone condemn you? No, Lord, she said. Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and sin no more. That is grace. The Lord Jesus saving the life of the woman, restoring her dignity, removing her shame, and giving her a chance to start all over again. Do we need more examples of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? How about the absurdity, the unreasonableness of the farm owner who gave the full day's wages to laborers who work only for one hour. They didn't deserve the full day's wages. They didn't work the whole day. How about the recklessness of the shepherd who left the 99 sheep to search for one stupid sheep that went astray? Or how about the foolishness of the father who disregarded his own dignity and public image to run and welcome his wayward son, hug him, and give him the finest robe and dream, despite the son squandering his inheritance and disrespecting his father? We would consider these all acts of foolishness. But the highest form of foolishness was this, that God would send His Son to redeem us, you and I, despite our unworthiness and our disobedience. This foolishness, in fact, was the ultimate act of grace. Christ crucified. There the Lord Jesus Christ offered himself as the Lamb of God so that we can be reconciled with God and receive eternal life. Dear friends, these days, 
when we feel the thorn of this pandemic, let us focus our eyes on Jesus and His grace. No matter what happens, let us trust His promise that there is nothing in this world that can separate us from His grace and love. Let us remember what God said to the Apostle Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. And now let's receive the blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.